around, man. I like Savon, man. I like him a lot, man. He's just a hothead. He thinks he knows it all. I used to be just like Savon, man, when I was coming up. Just like him. He just got to be philosophical about this shit, man. It's all crazy. As long as you know it's crazy, you're all right. As soon as you're trying to make logic out of this, you fucked up because it don't make no sense. See, the white man makes dope, right? Then he gives it to us. Then he wants to buy it from us, right? Then he puts us in jail when we sell it to him. Man, it don't make no fucking sense. Only thing a man's got is his family and his pride. That's all he's got. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Every time you go to a bar, the bar's got somebody in it thinks he's tough as a nickel steak. But they all come to speed for the do re me. Now get this. We ain't partners. We ain't brothers and we ain't friends. My little brother was 15 years old. You think about that. You're waiting. No. How about cutting heat? Oh, I get it. You want some kind of contest, huh? You're a real smart boy, ain't you? I guess maybe you'll have to kill me. It'll hurt if I do. Well. Looks like I finally ran into someone that likes to play as rough as I do. Yeah, this must be a lucky night. And my body, they're not nice like me. Are we supposed to say thanks? You're not supposed to say nothing, soldier. They came looking for a dream. This, my friend, is a treasure map. We're gonna find that gold, Vince. I'm telling you, I can smell it. They came looking to even a score. What I want to do is someplace way out when nobody is off the track. What they found was a nightmare. We want us dead. We're witnesses. Damn it, Don, we're getting in awful deep. MCA Universal Home Video brings you a high caliber adventure you won't soon forget. Director Walter Hill's Trespass. What the hell are you white boys doing up here anyway? Walter Hill's most entertaining film since 48 Hours, says USA Today. Is that right? The Boston Globe calls Trespass the best pure action movie of the year. Ain't that amazing? Starring Bill Paxton of Aliens. I'm just here. I'm not looking for trouble. William Sadler of Die Hard 2. Hey, you heard the deal. Now you're taking or leaving. Ice-T of New Jack City. You need to stop thinking with your trigger finger and use your brain. And Ice Cube of Boys in the Hood. Ain't nobody king of the street. From the creators of the Back to the Future trilogy, Trespass is a film packed with non-stop action and heart-stopping thrills. That's a hot one. Trespass. It's all about survival. It's all about getting yours. Back up! It's all about gold. Trespass. Hello, folks. Welcome to Last Call of Torchies. You're, I, can't, I can't say you're one and only show, but it is one of the only shows where we dive in to the oeuvre, the, the filmography and directorial stuff of one Walter Hill, uh, one of our favorite journeyman directors, writers, producers, and all that good shit. But um, here tonight with me are the normal guys you would hear on this show. Mr. Lee Russell, how you doing, sir? Uh, I was doing better till I heard we had competition in the in the Walter Hill game. Who are these other people? And I, I, I don't know because when you say you say you're the only one, there's going to be that other guy that makes a Walter Hill podcast, and you know. Oh, okay. So, so you don't actually have any real podcasts that you know about that are doing this? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Should, should I put away my baseball bat? Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Okay. We're going to go to war, son. For sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. Warriors. <laughs> Oh, I watched it for fun, just to watch it at work one day, like a couple weeks ago. She just threw it on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good uh, having the background movie. I, I did the Cyrus speech at work, and I wasn't even drunk, so there's that, you know. <laughs> Stone Cold Sober, y'all. Um, Cameron Scott is here as well. You've heard him in the background. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, man. Glad to be here for this one. This, this is a good uh, double bill we're doing here. Great, great, great. Yeah, I'm excited to be here, too. I, I, I enjoy both of these things. Uh, I, I hate to say one more than the other one, because they're both they're both pretty good. Yeah, we're talking about the Patreon one, too. You'll hear about that towards the end of the show. Uh, but this is Trespass. Um, uh, Bob Gale, Robert Zemeckis, Walter Hill collaboration. Uh, I guess from their Tales from the Crypt days is 1992. Um, right. Uh, 
three white guys making a hood movie, and you know it's not, <laughs> it's not bad. You know, so, so let's put it that way. Well, at least they're honest about you know white people stumbling into the hood or are fucking bumbling b- buffoons. This, so this uh, is yeah. true. It's written that very well in that sense. Yeah, it's a case of fuck around and find out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're cheap you know, joke. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, a couple of uh, white guys go fucking around in St. Louis where they shouldn't have, trying to steal some shit. I mean, t- come on. They're asking for trouble. <laughs> yep. For sure. Faux show, faux show. Uh, this movie's cheapo plot synopsis from my MVB is two firemen in a burning building get a treasure map. Stolen gold church items are hidden in a closed-down factory in, in, in East St. Louis, Illinois. They had that wrong on here. Uh, once there, they're trapped in su- trapped in by a black gang, considering it their territory. This, of course, is written. Uh, this is directed by Walter Hill, uh, written by Bob Gale and Robert Zemeckis, and it stars a star-studded cast of people. Uh, some folks are, most of these folks are versions to um, the Walter Hill universe. But uh, Bill Paxton's back um, from those streets of fire as, as visiting mm-hmm. our firefighters. Yeah. Uh, William Sadler. Making his first appearance, at, well, not well, technically his second appearance, I think. I, mean, I can't tell you which uh, order the Tales from the Crypt came in, but um, off the top of my head, but right around the same time, I'd say, as, yeah, as Don, our other firefighter, uh, Ice T as King James, Ice Cube as Savon. You have both Ices, folks, people. Um, yep. the, the great Art Evans. Um, when you couldn't get Stan Shaw, you got Art Evans as the homeless guy Bradley in this movie. <laughs> Uh, we'll talk about him, I'm sure. Uh, Deborah White is lucky, mm-hmm. uh, who's uh, King James's uh, brother in this movie, and uh, comes into play. Bruce A. Young as Raymond, Glenn Palmer as Luther, T. E. Russell as Video, Stoney Jackson uh, back again from Star Streets of Fire as well as Wicked, uh, t- t- Tom Tiny Zeus Lister. I'm gonna call him as mm. Cletus, the, the the man with the fucking metal cleats in this movie. That's what they call him, Cletus, yeah. I guess you know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> rightfully so, yeah. John Tolls Bay as Goose, and then Hal <laughs> Landon Jr. shows up as for like a hot second as the guy who gives them the map, e- Eugene. Right. Uh, you may know him in many things, including Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure as Ted's dad. He's in that movie. <laughs> you know, good shit. Um, I, I was excited we were doing this movie, and um, I'm going to kick it to. Some music pains I know nothing about of this movie. Uh, Lee, uh, head us off, sir. Yeah, um, this is the second time I watched this. I first watched this back in the 90s when it came on uh, VHS, and I uh, rented it. And I remember enjoying it quite a bit. Um, I don't know why I never really came back to it, though. Uh, It kind of surprises me now, but um, I really liked the second watch of it. I think the I think my big takeaway from this is that deep down under like the sort of modern uh, sort of uh, accent to this, you know, where it's it's updated, but it, it's really a uh, an adventure movie in in some respects at its heart, where it's uh, you know white guys find a treasure map to an ancient treasure hidden in a temple in this case the temple is just updated to a, this big warehouse that's been abandoned uh the and I, i'm not trying to be racist here just saying the native population is protecting the treasure and trying to claim it for their own or whatever so that's like the uh the gang uh elements that are also in the area um and then of course it spins off from that kind of structure to uh you know this sort of uh, tense uh, sort of cat and most game where there's a locked door between our two op- opposing forces and uh, our, our dumb greedy white guys are trying to escape with the treasure and uh, the black gangsters on the outside are are trying to get in and get them uh, they have a hostage at one point um, and it's so it becomes like a, a really good neo-noir kind of crime movie as well at the same time and a bit of an action movie. It's got all kinds of different elements kind of being brought into it. And I think Walter Hill handles them pretty damn well. Like, you know, it's kind of his steady hand behind this whole thing where he's done all of these sort of things basically a million times already. So 
he just puts the ball in the pot and kind of and kind of plays with them. Um, yeah, I like this quite a bit. I, I really enjoyed this this watch. Cool, Cameron. Oh god, I love this movie. It's been a few years since I've seen it. I, again, like Lee, I like I haven't revisited it in a long time. But it used to be in my heavy rotation back in the nineties. This used to be like a good party movie. Mm. Uh, much like our, our Patreon movie that we're getting ready to walk, uh, review here too, as well. It was just, you know, I love the soundtrack. I love, you know, the Ry Cooter music. I love the incidental music. And uh, we used to sort of this at my house all the time when I'd have, <laughs> I'm dating myself here, but when I would have like D&D sleepovers mm-hmm. and stuff like that, this would be a movie in heavy rotation. And uh, much like you said, Lee, it's, uh, it's it, it feels almost like a cook making something familiar. Making something mm-hmm. that's like he knows all the ingredients. He doesn't have to measure. He doesn't have to, you know, be exact or anything. He just, you know, goes for it. It's very familiar territory with, with uh, you know, for Hill. But it's just, it feels like it feels like a, a chef making you their best dish. You know, it's just mm. it's, a, it's a great movie. It's well acted. I think Ice T and Ice Cube are really good in it. Everybody yep. is top notch and giving it their all, especially Cletus. But, uh, <laughs> But uh, um, I'll, I'll save my, my, my summary of it in, for the end, which one of these that uh, I loved watching more uh, better this time around. But this was a very, very fun rewatch for me. Oh, I, I dig this one quite a bit, too. I'm, um, I'm, I'm glad we're to this point because, yeah, we, we, we um, got to the last film. We go directly into this film, which, which I, what I love about Walter Hill is I guess they're totally different but, but familiar and – these two guys, you know, real greener on the gills. They got the eye, the the eye for greed. They know where to find this this treasure. I mean, they're using the tools of the trade, which I can appreciate. That they're firemen, so they mm-hmm. use the the picks to to break through floors. Which uh, yeah, I, I I think you know, as firefighters that they've been doing this this long, they should know the building structural integrity a little better before when they walk into the place, they just start tearing up floors and ceilings and shit. But right. It's, it's a... <laughs> <laughs> Seems a little haphazard. It's a, it's a real small bitch, but you, you know, they're literally tearing up floors and, and ceilings in this thing and anything can break. But you know, when, when they're inside, you know, the, the building in, in the beginning with the fire, which, you know, great, um, Guy, real f- guy on fire scene in that movie, that part. By the mm-hmm. way, you know, there's there's two great stunts I love in this film for sure. That scene and the, the guy who what was his name again? I forget his name. I gotta look him up now. The one that tried to fuck over King James uh, in the beginning of the movie. Um, damn, damn, damn. Oh. It, it, anyway, this guy eats, Raymond. Yeah, was it Ra- Raymond? It could be Raymond. Yeah. This guy eats shit uh, uh, through a window, through a plane, plane oh, window, better yeah. than anybody oh, else. Because, goose. That's Goose. Yeah goose, yeah, goose falls through the window, all the way down. On his way down, he hits his spine on the railing. So, oh. he, so he's not living through this, guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> that that was a great like drop, man. That was um, that's up there with the uh, one with the uh, the firefighter in, in wreck that like just comes out of nowhere. Um, and, and it sort of drops in the background of where, like, Oh yeah. 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 That's really good. Ouch. <laughs> it's a great stunt. I, I love that stunt. And like I said, the guy on fire at the beginning was, was pretty great because yeah, full and, body burn. I don't know what he's afraid mm-hmm. of, but that full body burn, you, you know, it's practical at 92. Uh, you, you gotta love it, man. Yeah. <laughs> the guts. Mm-hmm. Um, your two, your two male leads, you know, Bill Paxton and, and, and William Sadler, no surprise. They're, they're great in this movie. Um, our heard protagonists are, are, are great in this movie. And yeah, Paxton's kind of... Um, oh, sorry. He's, he's kind of uh, just, you know, working up the kind of earnest, kind of honest bumpkin who gets in over his head and makes wrong decisions character that you'd see and sort of perfected in like a simple plan. You know, yep, yep, for sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, this is the time for these guys to be making movies, though, because Ice T and Ice Cube are in this movie together, and you know, just coming off of New Jack City and Boys in the Hood and all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff like that. So they're they're hot right now, as far as the music career goes, too. 
I think you get at least one 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 Ice Cube song in this movie. I think. I'm pretty sure you do. Uh, and Walter Hill is kind of like he's kind of you know going a little trendy here with the movie. Like he's 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 kind of catching the the zeitgeist or whatever word you want to use for it. You know, like he's we've we've got the the uh, gritty black gang movie element. Um, we've got Roy Cooter doing a more grungy kind of score. Like it's still got his kind of bluesy twang to it, but there's more of a kind of a, you know, more, uh, drop D tuning chords or whatever. I don't know if he's necessarily really using drop D tuning or whatever, but it sounds like the music that's starting to come out of Seattle and stuff around this time. Um, and you know, he's got, uh, apparently he's got Motorola being one of the, I don't, I don't know if they, how much money they put in this movie, but uh, their stuff is all over this fucking thing, including the uh, video camera um, that is a, <laughs> right. a, a prominent little gimmick in this for, for quite some time as well. So he's, he's, he's kind of like experimenting with a kind of all kinds of hot little uh, things that are going on like er, in the early 90s. I was lucky to have a pager at, at 12, 13 years old, so you know, mm-hmm. cell phones were expensive. Uh, I guess drug drug kingpins can can um can afford them at this point, though. <laughs> right, that's bling back then, right? Like oh, that's yeah. like if if you're if you're a a, a black uh, person from an underprivileged uh, background or whatever, and you're carrying around a Motorola at that point, that's uh, it feels like maybe I'm totally wrong, but it feels like that would be kind of a status symbol kind of thing at that point. The Motorola. Well, everybody didn't have them back then. You know? Yeah. Everybody had one in their back pocket. <laughs> the, the Motorola or the indestructible Nokia phone. Everybody had one. The little Nokia phone mm. that you could play Snake on and shit and nothing else. And, you know, make calls with. <laughs> but you could throw that bitch across the room and won't break. <laughs> <You know>? mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, Art Evans, um, a lot of folks may know him as the detective from Fright Night, uh, shows up in this as Bradley, uh, our, our homeless person who's living inside, living inside the building they're trying to steal the gold from. And, mm-hmm. um, he's Legit great. my favorite character in this. Yes, he's great. And then, spoilers, Bradley gets away with the gold in the end, and it's kind of wonderful. <laughs> it's, it is, it's it is good. It's a poetic ending. He yeah. deserves it. He's been sitting, like he even says at one point, I've been like sleeping with that over my head all these years. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, and there's a little bit of a Sierra Madre riff in this, where the where the gold is making everyone irrational and everyone greedy. Like, even you know, some of these people didn't even know about the gold, but once they learn about it, it's like we need to get that fucking gold. And and the gold puts Paxton and Sadler at each other's throats, and. Uh, and poor uh, Bruce A. Young there is Raymond. He's he's in he's just kind of stuck in the middle with them for quite some time, just hoping these two stupid white boys don't get him killed. It's, it's pretty entertaining. Like he's tied to a chair for what a good first half of the movie, <laughs> something like that. Oh yeah, lucky. Yeah, his, yeah. His character is like, and when he's not like uh, tied to the chair, they tie him to the door. Is like you know almost like a bulletproof vest, and it's like okay, shoot through your brother. And it's like okay. Like William Sadler, Sadler goes dark in this movie. He goes like oh, yeah. this fucking blood money happy. I think I, I think I mentioned this before. With um, it was with uh, Lance Hendrickson in uh, Johnny Handsome, but I, and how I saw that like William Defoe could have easily like come back and and played that part, and and I I kind of see he could have played the uh, William Sadler part here too. I think. It would have been an interesting uh, twist. Not, I'm not saying I don't like William Sadler in this part because he's perfect, but I, I just every once in a while I, I'm just kind of like fan casting like previous guys that have appeared in in Walter right, right. stuff, you know. And uh, like we don't get any Brian James anymore. Like he's he's I think we mentioned in uh, 48 another 48 hours that was his last movie with Walter Hill. So it's, it's kind of interesting to see like all these sort of new players coming in, and there's still a couple old. Uh, favorites still rotating in and out and stuff, but uh, yeah. 
Definitely no torchy sighting in, in this movie, by the way. I, <laughs> I've given, I've, I was, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. My note is basically, I've given up and never seeing another torchies in any Williams, uh, Walter Hill movies. Uh, it, 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 could, oh. it could have been that honky tonk where they were like formulating the plan. I don't know, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, in pretty, my mind, it, in my mind, it, it's torches. They just didn't show the sign. Uh, I think I saw a sign though for something, so I'm I'm bummed. Either way, I'm just like I've given up. It's all right. Walter Hill's not gonna he's not gonna fulfill my uh, my need for the Walter Hill universe. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave it. I, I, I have to disagree on the Willem Dafoe cut, though. I, I I think you need William Sadler, who's still. Got that country twang to his voice. Hell, Bill Paxton, uh-huh. Bill Paxton too. He had to play that special blend of early '90s. You know, I'm racist, but I'm not a racist thing. You know, even Bill Paxton yeah, yeah. goes in on on Bradley a little bit. You know, I, I forget oh, yeah. why he says tell him to shut his black ass up or something. He says he, even he, something like that. He dives into it just a little bit, but you know, Bill yeah, Paxton. Yeah, Bill yeah. Paxton, I'm not. I'm not. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm just I'm saying I'm not I'm not saying I want to see Sadler replaced. I'm just saying like in the back of my mind it's like eh, it'd be interesting if uh you know if they had uh had a different person in there, like Wilm Defoe just in there for fun. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm totally happy with the way the cast uh, turned out. Well, what about William Defoe as Bradley? Now that'd be something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would. Yeah. I would never want to replace Art Evans because he's the MVP here. But that, mm-hmm. that's, that'd be different. <laughs> I, I, mm-hmm. love, I love this movie because you could easily interchange these these African American characters with white characters. You know, you yeah. Know, put it put it like like um, you just did Mean Guns for your Albert Pune Appreciation mm-hmm. Month. This yeah, could, yeah, this could easily be Mean Guns if it had more more. These were all white folks, so you put Willem Dafoe in there as King James or whatever you're going to call him. You know, if you, well, if you I, if they're, they're interchangeable. Is all I'm saying. That, that that's just good writing right there to make this a hood movie, but at the same time, it, it could be it could be anybody. You know. Yeah, I yeah. mean, they could have easily went out to the middle, like of you know Indianapolis or something like that, or went anywhere with it, and you know had the. You know, the gang members could have been anybody. And it, you know, could yeah. have been pretty interchangeable because I think this was written in the seventies, wasn't it? If I remember right, in the yes, Wikipedia, something like that. Yeah, it was. It was a script that was bouncing around. Um, that like, like I think Zemeckis and Gale had uh, worked on, maybe if I'm not mistaken. Because, I think so. or, or or was it was it the was the trivia that it was the. Um, uh, Demon Knight was the uh, script that was bouncing around th- from the seventies, but uh, with those guys. But uh, yeah, I, I can't, can't remember. remember. <laughs> be, be e- true. E- either <laughs> way, both both solid films, guys. Mm. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Ernest Dickerson, he made some of my favorite things. He shot some of my favorite things too. I think you know. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, he 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 kills it with Demon Knight for sure. And you know, I'm I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if like uh, there was an interview somewhere with Pune saying that you know he was a big fan of this movie and like this was an influence on Mean Guns to some extent because it's got a it's got a little bit of a proto Mean Guns kind of thread going through it. You know, it, it's got sort of that same situational thing with a bunch of guys all kind of like cooped up in a confined area trying to get at each other and stuff it, it's kind of got that same idea going and you know where it's got you know uh iced tea carrying over here and um yeah and it's it's kind of action heavy and stuff like that like it, it, it feels like something pune might have made it on a lower budget the hell as much as yeah. much as much as i love it um ben wheatley's free fire is a ripoff of mean guns you know <laughs> I've yet to see that. I need to. I need to check uh, that out. I. It's got it's got a big cast, and I love it. Actually, it's pretty good. Mm. Yeah, this, this is the fun way. I, I mean, it's a hood film, you know, without without being you know too too delved into there. I, I'll get in to what we're going to talk about next. You know, when mm-hmm. it, it just makes that switch, or a certain character in, in, in the, we're talking about Judgment Night for the Patreon, and uh, he makes that <laughs> switch that I love so much. Like, yeah. I'm fucking crazy, you know, and um, so good. <laughs> <laughs> but this one's really good. It, it, it works with the environment real well. It works within the setting really well. Um, 
the characters. Yeah, there's, oh, I'm sorry. There's some good, there's some good tension with the uh, where you know they're trying to get across from the window to that other like part of the building. So they were like trying to make like a, a basically you kind of they're kind of doing the same yeah, thing. Yeah, they that laid they, the, like the ladder across. Yeah, yeah, they're basically doing the same thing that ends up happening in our uh <laughs> in our uh our uh patreon movie that we're doing as well as some oh, shit, they right do there. don't they yeah oh god, god damn <laughs> oh and i love and i love that they have you know like the, they have they have the sniper and they got like time uh tiny lister like, up on the building like you know keeping an eye on them and shit making sure they don't try to escape out of their window and everything it's, it's fucking really well done what I love about it is you don't know which side is going to crack first. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, you know, there's a lot more of our, uh, you know, our, our, our gang friends versus the firefighters. Was it's just the two of them versus a whole lot of them. But, mm-hmm. you know, there, there's inner fighting between everybody. You know, William Sadler is keen on getting the money, you know, and he doesn't care about these motherfuckers. He doesn't care about Bradley. He yeah. doesn't, really doesn't care about his friend because he's so right you know, at one point where he just starts wailing on Bill Paxson. But mm-hmm. it's like everybody is working against one another. Even before, you know, like Ice Cube and, Ray, and Ray, the Raymond character find out that there's gold, they're, they're all kind of working against King James. You know, they're like, you know, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want to do. So you don't know which side is going to make, you know, yeah. which side is going to break first. I, I, I love I, the tension. Yeah, you, you get right from the get-go the sense that Ice Cube has been wanting to step up and, and take over the gang because he doesn't like the direction it's going. And when Ice-T starts getting too wrapped up in this and when his brother gets uh, kidnapped and you know is held hostage on the other side of the door, um, then he gets really irrational and, and bent out of shape and... And Ice Cube can kind of see that, like, this is going to get us all killed if we don't fucking do something real quick and get rid of these white boys. We we got to stop stalling, and we got to get them killed and get the fuck out of here. Um, but you know, Ice T ain't thinking straight at that point, so like he's doing all kinds of different stuff. And um, yeah, it, it's it's very good, like just back and forth at each other's throats kind of thing, and it slowly builds and other people in the gang start siding with ice cube, but then there's still double crosses between them as well. And, uh, it's all kind of fun stuff going on in this movie. It's a, it's a great balance of power. You know, he, he makes that switch to where Bill Paxson witnesses the murder of the, the guy, mm. uh, a gloriously fall into the glass when we, we talked about earlier. And yeah. It, it goes from them trying to, you know, shut these white boys up, could go find them and either kill them or, you know, whatever, more than likely kill them, to when they, they kidnap Lucky, who has a drug addiction, it comes into play um, mm-hmm. gloriously, in my opinion. That's a real tense moment. You know you know what's going to happen. <laughs> that uh, that could have been handled, that could have been handled so wrong, too, like where it could have felt really just stupid. But the way it's played, it works really well. I was like, okay, this is either going to go really bad or it's going to go really good. And it went really good. So, well, Yeah, I think they handled it really well. It was very fucking believable. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't think at that point, though, Lucky would have been that his motor skills would have been all that great. Because I think in New Jack City, um, Chris Rock is Pookie is probably one of the most, <laughs> most honest portrayals of somebody who's de- who's coming down from the crack binge and, and not doing it anymore. Of course, he gets back mm-hmm. to do it again. But I, I think that uh, Lucky would have been a little more shaky. To, to, he would he would have been thinking correctly for one thing, but he jabs that fucking crack needle and then his fucking neck. And it, was it, this crack? I thought it was heroin that oh, he was doing. Whatever. You, you would think it's crack at this time, but yeah, I, I could have been wrong. Um, pro- probably heroin. But he jabs it in his neck, and um, this, of course... He's still functional as a human being at this point, but he's he's uh he's in it he's in it now. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I think I think that's the only part that's slightly unbelievable because I think he'd be one hell of a mess. Lucky wouldn't be able to like stand up. I don't think. Yeah, but I I, I just movie, I feel, this movie logic though, right? Yeah, it, it I feel it works within the logic of this movie. It's it's just like it's it's a thing where it's like you go with it because it it's fun. You know, and, and yeah. it's go and it's going somewhere. It's, it's ramping up the action. It's it's changing the stakes of the standoff. So it just it just works in that context, and you can kind of you can 
just kind of dismiss it as like, yeah, it's movie stuff, and, and it's good movie stuff. Uh, I think the most dishonest portrayal of a drug come down is when Homegirl and uh, Jason takes Manhattan, gets the drugs in her. <laughs> <laughs> she's dizzy one scene, and the next scene she's just fine. You know, it's, it's, uh... <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like, no. Yeah, she'd be... <laughs> she, she'd been drooling for the rest of that movie. <laughs> Although that, that that's the least of that movie's problems, but uh... oh, yeah. <laughs> it's got a banging opening song though to it, so there's that, you know. It does, it <laughs> does. I just, I just I just wish the heavy metal girl uh, stayed around longer, but oh well. You yeah. mean both, sir? Well, she she had to die, so 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 Garth Garth could live, I guess. Um, well, fake Garth, the the, <laughs> the, the guy with the video camera, you know. <laughs> he dies too eventually. I haven't watched it in so long. It's it's it's, mm. it's literally one of the you worst. You mean J- ever. Jason takes Vancouver? It, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of the worst ones, but one of the best ones to talk about because it's so awful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's so fucking bad, but it's like it's one of those that's so bad it's good. Yeah, or at least it's so bad it's interesting. Oh yeah. my gosh! Well, what's what's some little factoids here we can say about this movie? Um. Walter Hill said of the film, I wanted to make a down and dirty thriller. I wanted to shoot it in a fast, hard style. I wanted to work off the cuff, making it all happen right there. So normal Walter Hill st- type uh, filmmaking right there. Just uh, mm-hmm. moving and grooving. Um, which is fine, but it's also to his detriment sometimes. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. was not released um, on a uh, projected date of July 3rd because of the L.A. riots. Um, Ooh, yeah. yeah. So it was retitled and they had a new marketing campaign devised. So the original title is called The Looters, by the way. Yeah, that would probably not play too well. Well, it might play really well in predominantly white theaters in southern states, but I don't know about anywhere else. It was a good decision, though. <laughs> yeah, very good decision. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, d- despite the fact it didn't make its budget back, but you know. Yeah, it, it lives in infamy, you know. It's, um,. You know, Hill came, Hill came off like a couple really big successes at mm-hmm. this point. So it's like, you know, he made a little, he made a, a bit of a smaller movie and it didn't, it didn't, didn't earn back the money, but you know, I think uh, it's good. You guys are correct. Loosely based on Treasure of Sierra Madre. It, it has, ah, there you go. Okay. It has those elements in there. Uh, <laughs> according to Walter Hill, Ice-T and Ice Cube were hired on their strength as actors and were allowed to input into the dialogue. They certainly had a lot of input in terms of what my guy would say is this. He wouldn't say it that way. He'd say it this way, and I gave them free free reign on all that. So, uh, those guys, yeah. those, those guys were on the streets. Uh, Ice T uh, sold crack to make records. So he he mm-hmm. he, he, know, he knows the game, kids. Uh, <laughs> what, what else we got here? Yeah, written in the seventies, went unmade until producer. Neil Canton showed Walter Hill the script, and he loved it. So Walter Hill made this happen, apparently. All right. There you go. Yeah, no women in the film, but I read somewhere on this this thing here that uh, Lucky was originally supposed to be girl, and um, King James's girlfriend is rather than his brother of the film. Uh huh. Huh. Okay, that's uh, that could have been interesting. Yeah, that would have worked. Yeah, it's uh, kind of like it's kind of like the thing. There, there's no women in this movie whatsoever, except yeah. for me. I don't know if there's any extra. It says in, in the IMDb that there was extras in the background, probably during the you know the bar scene. But yeah, yeah. that's it. Ooh, yeah, there we go. I forgot. I forgot about this too. Uh, reunion from Die Hard Two. William Sather and Art Evans were together. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. You, you can't forget naked Tai Chi William Sadler in that movie, but uh, <laughs> it, it, it kinda, I bet he it, wishes he could forget that. It, yeah, it, it, that and John Amos kind of make Art Evans kind of forgettable. I hate to put it that way, but I wa- I think Die Hard Two is probably my my least watched of of all the movies. Well, except for the Live Free and, and Die Hard. What, what were the ones that were in Russia? I watched that once and never oh. again. Yeah. Right, Live Free and Die Hard was the one with Timothy Oliphant. I yeah, can't remember so, the so, so, yeah. So that makes a good day to good. Die Hard. Yes. That was the ru- Russia one. The, the, and then and Kevin Smith at one point, and uh, yeah, yeah. But you, you know, Part Two. Actually, I like Part Two a lot. Like a lot of people don't like it just because it's basically exactly the same movie except for in an airport, and it's way darker. Like it's 
it's kind of it's not fun like even even though you know die hard the original one does go kind of hard as an action movie it's still really fun part two just isn't as fun part two is a little bit more like oh man that's a bummer but it's still really good it's still good yeah yeah, James from Good Times on fighting John McClane on the wing of a plane. It's just hits a little different. Mm-hmm. And it's got Dennis Franz in it too, so there's that. Yeah, yeah it's got Franco Nero as a, like a yes, uh, I forgot. yeah, as a as a exiled general from some like South American country or something. Is near? Is this a Russian company country or? state or something i can't remember i thought it was russian of some sort might 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 have been either, either way it's franco nero just pops up out of nowhere and like that's awesome <laughs> like oh shit motherfucking django mm-hmm. uh it's, it's almost <laughs> as good as um oh who is it henry silva showing up in dick tracy for like five seconds you know like yeah. oh man that <laughs> I, I saw that in theater and that that bummed me out because I was like, oh, I, I kind of knew who Dick Tracy was, and I knew he had all these interesting bad guys and stuff, and he, and immediately we see them, and it's like, oh, this is going to be awesome. We got all these freak show bad guys that he's going to tackle. It's like, no, they're all killed. Yeah. It's like, oh, man. That's one of my favorite things about that movie is the people who show up in it. It's, 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 it actually over, overturns the movie a little bit. You know? Yeah, but I, I do got to say... Uh, <laughs> uh what's his face you 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 don't need to play dick tracy again you're too old uh <laughs> I, I, I oh i know he keeps holding on to that he's gonna play dick tracy again that ain't ever gonna happen it's, i hope i hope not it's so weird because there's something with the rights and i watched i watched like five minutes of the special that he made recently mm-hmm. where he's being interviewed as dick tracy he's 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 going full meta on this thing <laughs> And the reason why he made this is so he can keep the rights to the character. Just in yeah. case he wanted to play it again. <laughs> what, what is Warren yeah. Beatty, like 90? He's 80-something, he's though. Still right? looks, he's he's gotta still be. looks the part, though. I, I'll take it. You know what? Um, no, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna accept that. I'm sorry. Like, I, I, I love the fact that he kept onto the rights and he wants to make another Dick Tracy something. That's cool. As long as you step off the screen and give it to somebody else, that'll, that'll be fine. Those, those, those Sondheim jams, I, I, I still listen to them to this day, you know. <laughs> good, good old Breathless Mahoney, back in business. Ain't yeah. Grand. It's so good. Cause, you know? cause I don't, I don't want to see them. <laughs> I don't want to see them Irishman, the Dick Tracy, and you know, like make make <laughs> make him look young again, but where he's still moving like an eighty year old, like fucking De Niro was in the Irishman. Oh yeah, L- running around like fucking Lurch. Oh. <laughs> Our friend Michael J. Pollock shows up in that movie. You know, there's, there's, uh... mm-hmm. So go, go watch Dick Tracy. And enjoy yourself. That's all I'll say about that. You know, but uh, back to Trespass. We're going back to East St. Louis now, guys. How, how did we get off track of that? I it's, have no idea. These things happen. Had something to do with know? die. Had something to do with Die Hard. We went mm-hmm. from Trespass to Die Hard to Dick Tracy. There you go. Those are those, those are the tangents, folks. Enjoy them or don't enjoy them. Yeah, the, these are the ones you get for free. <laughs> Wait till the Patreon you get more tangents and the tangents upon tangents. But um, mm-hmm. you can watch these for free on Tubi, by the way, and you can get the the screen the, the screen factory shout factory shout select or the hell it is, uh, Blu-ray. Uh, that's out there too, DVD, digital, all that good shit. It's it's a winner. I mm-hmm. enjoy it. I enjoy the hell out of it. It uh, it fits right in that that frame of nineteen ninety two where you're making films like this, and you know, it does it w- without patronizing the characters. And like I said, this could easily be turned into white characters. The bad our 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 bad guys in this movie and right. Uh, Truly excellent, you know. Dressed to the nines, I, I love, I love King James's look throughout this entire movie. It, it just looks great. <laughs> um, yeah, I, there's something, there's something about Ice T where you know he's going hardcore and straightening his hair and everything, and he's wearing like a nice suit and a hat, and he j- he just really stands out. It's like you don't seem like a hard ass gangster, and it feels like that's kind of part of the dynamic where, like, you know, the more stereotypical gangster like ice cube is kind of like this guy's a phony like this guy doesn't hold up yeah. he, he yeah, shouldn't he, be running this game keeping it re- well yeah he had that little he's see, not, he's he not a, legit he at had all. a little, 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 little side where he was talking to to, to, the, to the camera doing the, the monologue there where 
said he used to be just like Tavon, you know, and then, then, mm-hmm. then, then he got wise. He, he's a businessman now in a way. So, you know. Yeah. So that, that was the one thing I wanted to touch base on was the, like, the testimonials, the video. The stuff's being shot on VHS. I, I know that was an aesthetic that, like, Hill wanted to capitalize on, and I knew it went with that character. You know, mm-hmm. always taping everything. I mean, that's how they, they ended up where they were because they caught a guy on tape, you know, making the shady deals, ripping them off. I just, it it got a little played out. It's, it's a minor, it's a minor quibble. Like, but well, it's one well, part that I was just like, it got a little repetitious after a while. Well, also, and you, when you think about it, that's a big liability to the gang because if those tapes ever get found somehow, like if he gets caught in like a traffic stop or something and he's got those tapes on him, that's the, all the evidence the cops need to find these guys and put them behind bars. Like, yeah, they got everybody on tape killing, stealing, doing whatever. I mean, like, yeah, <laughs> it's not smart moves. Yeah, clearly Ice T already isn't thinking all that straight. If he's letting that shit go down in his gang, like first first thing I'd do if I was Ice T, I'd be like, "We're getting you're either dumping that fucking camera." Or we're dumping you off a fucking roof because yeah. we can't we can't have that shit. Yeah, video's got to go. That that's bad for business. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> Goddamn video. Um, final thoughts, Lee. Uh, Lay it on us, brother. Uh, this was highly enjoyable. Like I said, like it's it's got several kind of genres mixed together, and they're all things that Walter Hill's really good at. So like he handles everything well. Um, there's good dynamics between the characters and the different groups here, which always sort of keeps it moving and keeps it really interesting. Like I didn't, I didn't find like any of this slowed down for me at all. Um, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, it's, it's got that Sierra Madre thing, which I really popped for. I, I always kind of like that kind of idea of, you know, this MacGuffin that's, uh, making everyone go crazy over trying to get it and uh, making them change how they do things and the real them comes out in, in some respects. Um, but it's all, you know, it's also not super deep or anything. It's like it all comes out in this fun kind of surface level action movie that uh, Walter Hill is totally apt in like handling. Um, you know, this is kind of middle of the pack Walter Hill for me, which makes it a really good movie. It, it It's not Extreme Prejudice, which is kind of like the new standard at this sort of like second half of, of his career that I'm kind of like uh, basing everything off of now. Um, but it's still really good. So uh, definitely recommended. Cool. Cameron? Uh, I'm just going to be reiterating a lot of what Lee said. This was a great uh, rewatch. It's, you know, it's not top of the pack Hill. It's, you know, it's kind of mid- middling. But still, Hill doing a, a middling kind of job is still, you know, ten times better than what most people put out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think the story and the dynamics between the characters is what I really love about this movie. Uh, you know, just ev- everybody's out to, for themselves. You know, Ice Cube is, you know, trying to get everybody, you know, against Ice T, King James's character. You know, William Sadler is fighting with, you know, Bill Paxton. There's this all these dynamics of. Who's going to fuck things up for who first? And I just, it makes things super tense. Like, I almost felt tired when I was done watching this movie. You know? <laughs> it was just like, damn. It was just like, all right, whew. I mean, like, go take a shower when this is over. But uh, mm-hmm. it's just, it's, it's really well done. And, like, other than, you know, the video footage, you know, that I, I kind of touched base on it, I, I have no complaints about this movie. It's so well acted. It's, you know, it's not you know, necessarily action packed, but it is very action oriented, if that makes sense any sense whatsoever you know it's, mm-hmm. it's 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 fast paced it's got great characters great action and the soundtrack i gotta like gotta touch base on when you got people like ice t on the soundtrack ice cube coolio i think it was even some uh sir mix a lot on there at one point you know it's got a great hip-hop soundtrack i mm-hmm. i wore this out on cd back in the day and i think we'll touch base a little bit uh on that with our patreon episode uh but yeah, they they both have that in common. It's uh, it's it's great all around. I I, I love it. Um, perfect for ninety two. Like I said, um, it's right there in that that that, that vein of ninety two, and it still lives. It still breathes pretty well today. So and that's hard to do with some of these these um these hood movies of this time because there's some ones that you know stick out, and there's ones that just kind of dwindle away. Um, 
Yeah. But the good ones stick around. I, I can name a few off the top of my head. I think New Jersey Drive is underrated as a film. You could go, go check that out, especially nowadays where you got 14-year-old kids stealing cars uh, in the city. Um, that life. Boys of the Hood, of course, we'll discuss next episode on the Patreon because I, I have a... I have I have a lot to talk about with Furious' son in that movie, uh, just losing his, <laughs> losing his fucking shit. Uh, um, Medicine Society, of course. You know, if you want to go, you know, spiritually, you can go. You can go into Ghost Dog all day long and just watch oh, yeah. that. Um, the political reverence and, and of the time of um, and even today of Tales from the Hood. It's silly, mm. books, but you know, you, there's a lot going on in that movie. That you you should check out if you 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 want to you know dig deep into it you know, um, this is great though this is just a fun action set piece great great siege movie um, it's, yeah. it's um we're in on the next one we're talking about in Patreon uh, Judgment Night that's more like um a city under siege the whole city is like the siege you know much like Police Academy yeah. Six it's 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 city under siege <laughs> ayo ayo mm-hmm. Hey, Tackle, we're going to drive big, Bigfoot in that movie, so I'm, I'm all for uh, uh, the, the place can be six. <laughs> so, uh, it's wild. This is this is great, though. Um, next one, you should hear on the main feed. We can talk about Wes Studi, y'all, and that's not bad at all. It's just good shit. Uh, Geronimo, uh, an American legend from 1993, a, a year later. So he's, he's keeping keeping going on that train Speaks to West Studios, as I mentioned. Um, Gene Hackman, Jason Patrick, Robert Duvall, uh, a baby Matt Dillon, Matt Damon in this movie. Um, mm. Kevin Teige shows up. Stephen McCaddy shows up. Wow. I, I have, Jesus. I've never seen this before, so I'm, I'm excited to see Stephen. Yeah, me, yeah. me either. That, that's a fucking cast. Holy shit. Yeah, I saw it once when we were in high school. and We went to uh, our history class, went to go see it. And that's the only time I watched it. So I remember very, very little. Uh, written by John Milius, y'all. So you know it's going to get it. It's oh. Be, uh, we, we can go either way on this. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it, it's either going to be really good or really Republican. One or the other. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope for one and one and not the other, right? Yeah, yeah. But that's coming up next. Um, the show you should hear after this should be on the Patreon feed. We're going to cover Judgment Night, uh, as mentioned, uh, featuring the, the great Dennis Leary and Emilio Estevez and the very comb-over um, Jeremy Piven. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> Was that guy born at 35? Can we talk about comb-overs, y'all? Come on now, you know. Hey, I shaved my head. I got over it, okay? Let's put it that way. It just, it's, um... Yep. I'm just emb- emb- embracing the receding hairline. I just comb my shit straight back. <laughs> like, look at my receding hairline, fuckers. I have to live with it. You have to look at it. <laughs> uh, the, the, you know, nothing is actually worse than, in a, like, the absolute worst fucking comb over that I've ever seen. I, I rewatched last night when I was screening some movies for my friends. Uh, we did, um, we did a double bill. We did, uh, Zombie 2, and we did uh, Forbidden Planet. Uh, Zombie 2 has Ian McCullough, who you know, <laughs> popped up in a couple of those zombie Italian zombie movies around that period. He has he is holding on with a, like a wish and a prayer, basically, with his fucking <laughs> hair. It is terrible. One little it stiff is, breeze, and it's all gone. It is bad. Like it looks bad, and when it gets wet, it looks even worse. And I'm just like, dude. I I guess maybe it, you know, you probably wouldn't get parts if you shaved your head, but man, they had to do something. They had to put a rug on them or something yeah. because it it was terrible. I got that beat because I rewatched <laughs> um, for some reason uh, Revenge of the Nerds two Nerds in Paradise. Oh, Ed, yeah. Ed Lauder has a sleazy comb over in that film to beat the band. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> so good. I love when he goes and he goes to draw in hairs like he takes a little magic marker and like ee, 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 yep, and draw it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh and, and, and by the way, James Hong and, and Curtis Armstrong are doing a convention together, so I guess it's all in the cards that the the, 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 <laughs> the fart guru and his his subject are getting back together again. And I would go to that show in a heartbeat. Wow, uh, yeah. I would too because <clears throat> they're both great. I've met both of them in, 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 over the years. Um, 
But um, I mean, I mean, honestly, that's pretty much the only thing I enjoy from Revenge of the Nerds too. So yeah, uh, that would be pretty good. Oh my gosh! But this has been oh, oh, and 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 the lack of rape, by the way, in Revenge of the Nerds too. That's refreshing. Yes. <laughs> They're just really horny in that movie. That's fine. You know. Yeah. <laughs> this has been Last Call of Torchies. The 